At just after four yesterday afternoon, police clashed violently with protesters in Central. Only two were slightly injured, but these were certainly the most violent scenes during the Queen's Pier saga. Tensions were running high and protesters let their feelings known. Earlier that morning, at about 11 o'clock, police moved into the area, and within three hours the bulk of the protesters had been removed from the half-century-old pier. Long hair, ever dramatic, had placed a chain around his neck and attached it to a pole, but it didn't take long until the area was completely sealed off and a perimeter set up. Only a handful were left on the roof of the pier, with the police unable to capture them for safety reasons. It was then that matters got heated, but it was outside the perimeter that the action happened. After the drama died down, protesters held an impromptu press conference, and with that, the waiting game began, with the police tactical unit watching patiently on. Police, decked out in climbing gear, moved closer and closer, tearing banners down just feet from the remaining demonstrators. All the time, drums were banged, songs of defiance and solidarity were sung, and white feathers, presumably symbolizing peaceful demonstration, were scattered from the roof. Then, as sunset approached, the police couldn't wait any longer. The last remaining seven demonstrators, some of whom had chained themselves to the roof, were encircled and removed one by one. Emotional scenes followed as this activist, visibly shaken by the experience, rejoined his friends and family. Wong Sao Yan questioned why the police had been so violent, but wished his friends the best. But by then, not many remained, until eventually just one lone man was left. Squatting on the corner of the roof for about an hour, the 17-year-old was eventually grabbed and removed. The 10-hour stand had ended, and then there were none, and one of Hong Kong's last colonial maritime monuments fell into the hands of the authorities, and most likely, after a judicial review next week, the hands of the developers as well. For the South China Morning Post, this is James Moore.